Good morning and welcome to St Mark's Church's service. It's Sunday, um, it's the 3rd of May already um, and how are you doing? I hope, um, hope everyone's coping okay um, in the midst of what is uh, very strange times. Uh, I don't know if you heard the um, service last week but it was such a lovely um, service um, and thanks to the children and their parents for um, doing the, um, the Bible readings for us and I hope you had fun um, playing and acting out um, Jesus um, on the road to Emmaus. Um, so many people said how much they enjoyed that so thank you and we miss you all the children and young people and the parents. Uh, so this week, uh, we're on a second week, uh, obviously all of Easter stuff um, is behind us and we're leading up um, towards Pentecost, got another sort of three weeks or something before Pentecost, um, so this Sunday we're going to add something new, we're going to have um, a time of sun worship, um, thanks to Andy and Myers and Lauren, uh, we're going to have our reading uh, which is John 10, 1 to 10, if you want to have that ready. Um, I'm going to preach, um, well, share really, um, on that, and that's about Jesus and um, the Good Shepherd. And then um, we're going to hear from a few people that are on our front lines. Um, so six months ago, they wouldn't necessarily have said that they were on the front lines. We might have thought of frontline people as more um, missionaries or, or whatever, but um, some of us are inside and we have to stay mostly inside. Some, because of their jobs, are um, out and about. And so um, Nicola Boss and David Pitt are going to share with us how things have changed in their work um, since um, the coronavirus struck and how we can be praying for them and will lead into um, a time of prayer. So, let's pause a moment, take a breath, we're here to meet with each other um, in God's presence. So as we enter this time together, with God now we pause to be still, to breathe slowly and to recenter our scattered senses upon the presence of God. And we pray, come Holy Spirit. And would you reveal Jesus to us in a very real way today, because we need you. So Lord, would you speak? No one is higher, 
Today's reading is from the Gospel according to St. John, chapter 10, verses 1 to 10. Jesus said, Very truly I tell you, anyone who does not enter the sheepfold by the gate, but climbs in by another way, is a thief and a bandit. The one who enters by the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him, and the sheep hear his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought out all his own, he goes ahead of them and the sheep follow him because they know his voice. They will not follow a stranger, but they will run from him because they do not know the voice of strangers. Jesus used this figure of speech with them, but they did not understand what he was saying to them. So again, Jesus said to them, Very truly I tell you, I am the gate for the sheep. 
All who came before me are thieves and bandits. But the sheep did not listen to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters by me will be saved and will come in and go out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So at first, um, this story may seem like a sweet picture of farming life. Jesus is the shepherd. The sheep are safely in the pen and he stops the bandits coming in. As long as you stay safe inside the pen with the other sheep and Jesus and not wander away or get picked off, you're okay, right? But then I read it. And it really challenged me about the way that I formed some of my thinking about people who aren't Christians, about the way to salvation. And it had reinforced a false perspective I had too on the role and limits of the church. It's all good news. Um, so the good news for me was that we are safer than I'd realised. We can go further than I'd thought Following Jesus is simpler and less precarious in real life according to this scripture and that we've got a lot more common ground uh, with those who aren't Christians than perhaps we thought. So giving his listeners a familiar scenario meant that a relevant example that Jesus gave was to the people was of agriculture was of making a living from the land, um, being a shepherd and um, looking after the sheep. And unless you're a farmer or a shepherd today, the example might be fairly inaccessible. And so for me, it had led to something of his point beyond the picture um, losing its meaning. Today, for example, Jesus might say, um, imagine you are isolated at home and you need to go to the supermarket. Um, something that we're experiencing at the moment be relevant and we'd clock in straight away and understand. Um, so uh, perhaps we can lose the meaning because either it's too familiar or it's unfamiliar and I think that's the case here. Um, and so maybe you've fallen into the same trap as me. I feel a bit embarrassed, <laughs> really embarrassed actually to admit it but here we go. So did, have you done this? I've bundled all the sheep related information from the Bible together and made a story or jigsaw puzzle that just doesn't fit. <laughs> and looking at this verse closely again helped me see uh, that my jigsaw puzzle didn't quite work. So there's the Ezekiel prophecy um, about um, Jesus as the shepherd, the Messiah. There's the parable of the lost sheep who wanders off. Uh, there's this passage. Um, and also Psalm 23, um, the Lord's my shepherd, where in my um, cranky picture, um, the shepherd is Jesus, the pen is probably the church or the kingdom of God, the bandits out here are the false teachers um, or wolves in sheep's clothing, and the sheep outside the pen are non-believers. So there's a group who are in and safe, and a group who are out and in danger or lost. And we want all the sheep to come into the pen um, like us. Then as I reread the passage, it started to tear down my analogy. The first hiccup for me was that it says, the sheep come in and out and find pasture. So they come in, they go out, and they're enjoying fullness of life around the outside of the pen. Secondly, the passage doesn't contain just one continuous picture, but two. And this is why Jesus describes himself as both the shepherd and the gate. Otherwise, it makes no sense. He can't be a shepherd and a gate at the same time. So what has happened is um, halfway through, having tried to explain to his audience in Jerusalem 
they were mostly religious leaders about who he was. Um, halfway through the passage, the scripture says that they didn't understand. So he had to think of a new way to teach his message. And this reminded me of Julie Andrews trying to teach tonality to a group of children. And seeing they just weren't getting it, the Solfar system, they said, she said, come, let me think of a different way to explain it. Do a dear. <laughs> okay. So as we read the second explanation, we have to momentarily lay aside the first part of the explanation in order to try and hear what Jesus was trying to say. And I believe actually he was fundamentally trying to describe the relationship between himself and us. Um, okay, so he explained it one way, they didn't understand. He re-explained it, but using some of the same imagery so that they could try and understand. So, thirdly, there is no exclusive sheep pen with only Christians in it. This is not how we're supposed to live, safely quarantined from the darkness of the world um, and those we fear may infect us. And this can lead to in and out thinking, where we're in and they're out. It's us and them. And this exposes that kind of thinking as quite prideful, really, that we've got it. Um, and so we're called to live amongst people. Um, a long posh word is incarnationally. Um, we enjoy these times that we have um, together. Eight o'clock on a Thursday evening, if we can get out onto our doorsteps. Um, we're connecting as community. We're getting to know our neighbours by name. And um, offering to pray begins to feel more like caring and extending a relationship rather than cold calling. Um, so we're meant to live amongst um, the people. So rather we need to think of the shepherd and his sheep like the relationship between a good parent and their kindergarten child. So I'd like you to imagine all of a class of children waiting at the gate to go home after school. The teacher will only let the genuine parent take home their own child. And as the parent calls the child by name, they are released into the parent's safekeeping. So in fact, a true um, reading of this story is that the sheep pen actually has lots of shepherd sheep in it. I imagine in my head some with green on their backs, some with blue on their backs. Distinguishable, but the same in essence. And a shepherd comes to the gate and calls out. His sheep, his sheep, will hear and recognise his voice and will come to him. It says those that don't um, recognise the voice will not come to the shepherd or they will flee, run away from them. And because they trust him, they will come out of the pen and go in again and come out into the freedom of the open grass and eat and rest there because they know his voice and because he is trustworthy. So uh, a question here, um, maybe about leadership, and it's hard not to mirror that um, with um, the augmented view through which we're seeing um, these leaders of the world right now reacting, responding and leading us in this time of corona virus. Um, we have a spotlight, um, a microscope really on um, how they're leading, what their motives might be, how they treat the least whether they're consistent, whether they can guide and lead as well. And a stunning example for me has been the leader in the female leader in, um, gosh, is it New Zealand? I'm not sure. Uh, she took a pay cut um, to reflect her people and show empathy with them in their situation. Um, and I'm sure that Boris's stay in hospital will have changed or sharpened his thoughts about how to progress next in the crisis and particularly to do with um, our NHS and how it needs protecting and resourcing. Others still 
um, have been exposed perhaps as self-serving, untrustworthy, inconsistent and a bit capricious. Um, so, so what kind of leaders have we? And what kind of a leader um, is Jesus in contrast? And the reason why Jesus told this story in the first place was that he's speaking to a crowd. Um, he's been answering the Pharisees and explaining that he is not like one of the other many leaders that are leading people astray um, in Jerusalem. He is not like one of these bandits, the sheep exploiters and stealers, um, the hustlers, the enemy. He is not one of these dangerous leaders, but he is a good leader. And indeed, he himself leads them out and goes before them. His primary focus is on the well-being and protection of the sheep. This is a different kind of leadership altogether. So I hope that's helped to open up the passage and maybe give you a slightly different view of it. Um, by way of applying it um, this week in the times that we're living in, uh, what might God be saying to us today? Well, I've got three things here. Um, one for leaders, um, something for us as followers of Jesus, and something for us as we seek um, to make disciples. So firstly, I want to speak to those who find themselves leaders in our current situation. Um, you may be frontline, you might not be, um, and you might be new to leadership. This might have propelled you out into a situation where you feel you have got people that you're looking after and, and are looking to you um, for direction. Those of you who are in this position, we too can emulate and live out lives of what Jesus modelled as leaders. We can build relationships, we can prove ourselves trustworthy, we can chat and listen so they, they, they know our voice. We can lead people clearly and be prepared to go out before them and not sort of do, ask them to do anything that we're not um, prepared to do ourselves first. Jesus is the gate. He comes to the door. He doesn't hustle and sneak in through a weakness in the pen. Jesus is good and he leads well. And so I pray um, for leaders here that we too might become good shepherds to others in this time as well as reflecting the likeness of the Good Shepherd. Um, secondly, to all those who are followers of Jesus, um, I'm guessing um, that's probably um, a lot of who's listening today. Um, but um, this passage actually contains some of the most liberating verses about how to be a disciple of Christ. It isn't... Uh, you know, you don't need a, a, a guide a guide for dummies or whatever. It is just so beautifully simple and free. And perhaps more precious to us now than ever, we hear his voice. I'm hearing of more people this week who are confessing really starting to struggle in lockdown. Feeling low, feeling frustrated, easy irritable. Anyone else? <laughs> <laughs> hands up, that's me too. Um, those who are Christians and those who are not. But perhaps um, there are other voices which are managing to crowd in as we're more isolated at the moment. So how are you feeling as a follower of Jesus? And what other voices may be trying to speak to us? Are they true? Are they trustworthy? Are they good? Do they make us feel safe? So we have our enemy. We have the world and we have our own internal voices that compete for our attention. And this passage um, frees us from all of that mind clutter because it says we only need to follow one voice. Maybe um, the enemy has been whispering lies to us about how rubbish we are as Christians. Um, getting us to look at how others are coping um, and compare, um, feeling guilty about our lack of zeal or struggling to pray. Maybe you're questioning God um, and the church 
What's it all about? Maybe the world is offering us things to consume at the moment and fill the gap and we've found comfort in those things. This passage, if that's us, reminds us that we can know his voice clear and loud and trustworthy. Oh, that was my cat. <laughs> we can know his voice clear and loud and trustworthy. We can trust him as we follow into the unknown that Jesus has gone before us and that there will be pasture or fullness of life in him. So compare your life at the moment may be confined in lockdown to this. Life in fullness may look like being a sheep who can live within temporary confines, purpose built to keep us safe. It means knowing Jesus' voice, trusting and following him, and letting him lead us into open spaces in order to feed spiritually and roam freely. So if you're struggling to find peace, why not sit down somewhere quietly and ask the shepherd, Jesus, to speak to you? And then sit and listen for a while. Maybe you can ask God in this time where we're confined to let him teach you to hear his voice. What a wonderful skill that would be to emerge out of isolation with. Maybe you want to set five minutes a day aside to sit quiet, open yourself up to God and begin to discern that those things that you thought were you just making it up or dismiss because God didn't have a booming Charlton Heston God voice, that maybe God is speaking to you. And if he is, it's because you're one of his sheep and he's leading you on. And finally, in terms of reaching out to people, as we emerge from lockdown, whenever that is, there may be a whole huddle of confused, disorientated, purposeless sheep. And I believe they will be looking for someone to follow. As every one of us is called to make disciples or share our faith, we can speak of knowing a God who is good, who gives us purpose, who gives us family to belong to, a God who we can trust and promises to be known to us. He keeps us safe and in him we found fullness of life. I do also believe that Jesus, describing himself as the door or gate in this passage, shows us that he is the way, the only way to that fullness of life. So let's not shy away from sharing that with others as well. Just pause for a moment, asking him what he wants to speak to you about. We're going to hear now from two of our precious people on the front lines. Hello everyone, this is Nicola. Thank you Anina for asking how you can pray for us on the front line. I am mindful that actually I'm out and about going to my work and I've got some free time as well and nice countryside nearby. So I am mindful that for some of you, all of you, life will look quite different. So you've all got your own challenges. So just because I'm in the NHS. So my GP work continues. We are uh, maintaining a service. So do see your GP if you need to doing most of our work on the phone and having to work out new ways of doing things. The information overload continues, but a little bit um, less so than before, um, but a huge amount of emails. Um, and then I'm also doing a session a week at a mould hub where we direct patients that might have COVID-19 from the area GP practices to keep them out of the standard locations. Um, so far, I've been very quiet. Got a lovely Christian colleague doctor with me when I'm doing those sessions. Um, 
again it has evolved rapidly there are still more changes to come we'll probably be doing home visiting in a higher car with PPE end of life care can get complicated and again just new ways of being working as being sort of quickly put together um, maybe also decide field hospital and the out of hours so I'm not the most flexible I like to know what I'm doing so prayer for me to just cope with all that and also to be still and know God with me and not be so distracted with I've had good things going on but kept me busy but just to walk with him in peace thank you God bless you all Hi Church, it's Dave here, just sharing a bit from my front line as a train driver. Um, we've got a 95% drop in passengers at the moment, which is really weird, but um, we're still ferrying around the key workers in our area. Um, some things to pray for, especially would be the County Lines Drug Group, which is really getting tackled by the British Transport Police now. The crowds are gone, so they're able to make a lot of arrests on that. Um, and a lot of that is happening at Chester, so please be praying for that. Please be praying for people's mental health on and around the railway. Um, we're getting quite a few close calls, a few um, incidents that we just don't want to happen. Um, and I think especially please pray for hope. Um, I'm driving around with a rainbow picture in the front of my train um, because hope is what we carry into places where there is none because we've got Jesus inside us. Um, and to be able to share that is a really powerful thing right now. So please pray for hope in mess rooms, on stations, on the trains, um, in the offices, anywhere you, you can think of. It's really much appreciated. God bless and see you soon. Let's pray. Dear God, thank you so much for those who are willing to serve us as a country and all the countries um, of the world as frontline workers. Thank you God for happy news that we've heard this week in our own congregation and, um, and ripples wider of pregnancies, of marriage by Zoom. New pets even new life amongst us. We're so grateful. And thank you God for those thriving in this time, those who are coming closer to you. Praying for all those frontline workers, God. And we name Nicola, David, Andrew Davis, many others amongst us, and their families and their colleagues, God. We pray for the trauma and stress that being out there on a daily basis may be bringing. Maybe for some people they're feeling guilty that they can, are not able to serve themselves. Pray for those who are struggling with mental health, those who are not coping well at all. And through the preach, God, we pray that you would free, um, free us, free the sheep from evil, from lies, from accusations, from hopelessness and despair. And we pray, God, in Jesus' name, for a stop to coronavirus and all of its symptoms. Lord, we ask for your presence, um, your angelic protection, really on the tracks of the trains, in the hospitals, helping people make wise decisions. And Lord, for wisdom for the world's leaders and the church's leaders, God. Lord, I'm so sad um, at the moment for those who are grieving. Um, loss, whether it's um, 
uh, coronavirus related deaths, old age, any kind of death, loss amongst our church family and those we know and love. Lord, would you be their comfort? Would you be their shepherd and lead lead them? Lord, and I thank you for your resurrection, that this is not the end. There is life to come. And now we just take a minute to pause. A chance for you to add your own prayers or fall silent before our God together now. And let's pray together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. So thank you for joining us. Um, it's been slightly longer um, than usual, but we have had the clips um, from our frontline workers and our worship. Um, we're... Um, uh, it's mutating, it's developing as we go, um, so please let us know um, how that's going and um, we wish you um, a safe uh, and healthy um, week this coming week. Um, apologies for the cat um, who has been in and out of this video. There he is, that's Scotty. So. A final blessing. Lord God, the shepherd of the sheep, you are good and I pray Lord that you would bless us with your goodness and awareness of our safety and abating of fear and that you would bless us with the beauty and the comfort of your voice this week. And may your blessing, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, be with us all and evermore. Amen.
And all my life you have been so, so good With every breath that I am able oh, I will sing of the goodness of God oh, I will sing of the goodness of God I will sing of the goodness of Give us sin and heal our world. 